Thanks for joining us on Hacking Gourmet. This episode's Hacking with Carney. If you haven't figured out, I am not in my usual location. I'm actually in Montana. Matter of fact, if this episode goes smoothly, I will be amazed because I'm not controlling it. Jonathan's controlling it. So we have, let's see, I'm in Montana. Jonathan's in Maine. McGee's in Texas. Plus, we have three people cooking with Carney. So, I mean, basically, who knows what's going to happen. But just so you can help you know, bring people along to also witness the carnage, uh, support and share this feed. If you can on Facebook, you can hit the share button. It's going to put it to other people that will also make fun of us. Uh, and you can go on uh, Gourmet on uh, Hacking Gourmet on Instagram at Hacking Gourmet and subscribe to us on YouTube. And that gets all that stuff. We have live shows every second and fourth Monday, no matter where we are. Matter of fact, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I mean, well, it's kind of hard to say that I'm in the middle of nowhere. It doesn't give that appearance when I've got like a nice cushy railing and there's a golf course behind me in the Montana hills. But I mean, trust me, it's, it, I'm, I, it's actually roughing it. So anyway, I want to welcome to the show Brian and Mr. Carney. Welcome, gentlemen. What is up, I, Fred? I just gotta say, we're calling it carnage will probably be the uh, nicest thing said about us tonight. Could be, could be. <laughs> this is this is definitely a stressful situation because I just learned something. Our, our first, I'd like to welcome. We'll get into this. I'd like to welcome our crowd in our private Zoom lounge. I just found that we can actually physically hear them. So we can hear you on the show. Um, I haven't quite figured out how to exactly fully hear you, but we can hear you on the show. Uh, so those in the Zoom lounge, great. But yeah, we're, it's a little bit of a mess today. We're all in different places. I'm actually in Miami. I'm at my place down here. Uh, we will have no Carney grill can today, but that will be the Zoom room uh, where we have our guests that are joining us and cooking today. But um, we somehow put this together. Sorry we were a little bit late, but uh, we were here. Well, how, explain to me how you say... You can hear them, but we can't fully hear them. What does that even mean? Yeah, because I, I can't hear them. I, I couldn't hear them before the show, and then when right. I went live on the show, I can hear them, and I don't know if our if our audience can hear them. Um, so I don't we'll know. see. I don't know what I can hear. Yeah. I can't hear them. Well, they have a mute. I'm muted right now, but we've got an exciting show ahead of us. Uh, Fred's been all over the place. Brian's uh, Brian's down in. Brian's the only one that's actually where he's I'm been the last fifteen home. weeks. Um, yeah. So yeah, we're, we're kind of roughing it, and of course, uh, as we like to do when we have the most challenging environments to possibly be in, we like to do the most stuff. So we have all sorts of activities going on today, um, and things coming from all directions. So we will be truly hacking it. Dramatic pause. Dramatic pause. And moving on. So uh, anyway, so um, you got well. Obviously, we've already established from different locations. And this is a little different. Uh, there are people in the Zoom lounge that are going to be cooking along with this week, Carney. Carney's our, our, the lead cook, if you will. They're going to be following him along at home. Uh, we've already established Brian and I can't hear him, but he can hear him much like the voices in Carney's head. Uh, we're just going to go along with it and pretend they're real and hope there are really people out there. Uh, last week was good that we had Chef Jam. We had KB on the show. That was really cool. Um, you know, I, I, I want to get him on a better camera and really see, you know, what he was cooking. But he, I mean, I got to see, well, finally, we got to see the board of what he had put on there. That was probably out of all of our shows, the most jealous one that I just wanted to try everybody's food that episode. Yeah, that was a good show. That was, uh, I learned a lot from that guy and, uh, what he went through, uh, as far as the experiences through culinary school and you talk to a lot of cooks and you, sometimes a lot of cooks have that one or two maybe three ingredients they hate to use or hate to cook with. He seemed like he really didn't have anything that was, uh, 
you know, put his palate off or anything like that, that he would cook with anything. What was, what was, what was it that he like that we hadn't tried that it wasn't like squirrel or something. It was something weird, really weird though. What was it that he, he I liked squirrel. Wasn't he talking about raccoon was, or something like that? Was it squirrel? Oh yeah. I think you're right. I think it was raccoon. I think he was talking about raccoon. I was say soft breads, but uh, I don't know. I got to go back and look what it was. It was something I hadn't had. Well, you know what? It must have been raccoon because I've had squirrels. It must have been raccoon. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to go back and look at it. So, all right. Let me go and kind of order here. Brian, what are you cooking? What are you cooking this week? So, I'm kind of cooking what Carney is a little different. I'm doing uh, a sous vide, uh, two sous vide fillet, fillets with uh, a lobster bernet sauce and uh, cream spinach. Very nice, very nice. Uh, I guess there's not much ingredients to really show on that. That's pretty, uh, pretty yeah, cut and dry. Uh, Let me simplest menu: uh, butter, egg yolk, and uh, a few other things to put in there. But it should. Uh, I was going to buy crab today, but for some reason I reached for lobster, so we had a last minute uh, ingredient change. I saw that. I saw the text. I mean, it, you know, I had to change all the stuff we're going to talk about. You know, I mean, I, I, try to take, I try to take this uh, meter rater job pretty seriously, and I, I tend to look at the show notes about two minutes before we go live, and uh, I saw your text, so I'm at a loss. So tell me real quick before I go over to Carney, uh, tell me what temperature are you sous vide the um, fillets in? 130. 130. I 130 like it. For All right, Carney, go, let's go over to you. Tell, tell me how you're setting everybody up, what you're doing. So first of all, I want to welcome everybody that's in the Zoom lounge now. As I said, you can be heard. I'm going to bring them on to the show. Um, physically their voices. We'll bring their pictures onto the show later on once we get into it um, and show where our production is and that. But I'm going to unmute the show right now. We'll see how this goes. Uh, but welcome aboard. We've got the crew from Smoking Tobacco with us today. Um, so that should be fun. So we're going to be cooking a couple of unique things here. It's going to be basic items, but it's going to be steakhouse things. You can cook at home, uh, but elevate them to a little bit with some basic, really simple uh, tricks, you know, uh, I guess for short-term hacks. Uh, but we're going to be cooking. Um, we're going to be cooking twin filet mignons. Let me get uh, the let me get the ingredients list on here. So what we did is we this is our first time we're doing it. What we did is we brought uh, an invited guest on. I'm having a hard time with this, Fred. There we go. See, see, yeah, it's, it's brutal. Not easy to cook it's brutal. Around the show, is it? <laughs> brutal. I, not only am I running the show, I'm running a separate show on the grill cam right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, so we got so what we did is we tasked everyone with going out and getting a shopping list. In the future, we'll have uh, some of our show partners. I actually just met with Meat and Bone this last week, who I've been ordering from. Uh, hopefully, we'll get one of them on board. And what you'll be able to order is a packet of things from uh, one of our uh, one of our sponsors and partners. Uh, but our guests were tasked with going out. Oh, I can definitely hear them. We got some cooking going on there. At least they know what they're doing. They're getting ahead of themselves, which is great. Um, that, was but the, a, that was a pepper shaker, a yeah. pepper grinder from McGee, but okay, hey, go with it. So this is the, uh, the shopping list that our guests went out and grabbed, um, and then what we're going to be making with this shopping list is we're going to be doing twin filet mignon. We're going to be doing those medium rare. We're going to be doing that in a tempered cooking technique. Um, I'm going to find out when I get on there if they have an oven or if they're working on the grill. I think they're just doing a grill, which is going to be good as well. Uh, but we'll be doing that, uh, we're finishing those off with rosemary, butter, garlic, salt, and then we have a Red Bliss potato salad. Uh, for those that are on the show right now, we're actually going to start with these Red Bliss potatoes, um, and I'll switch over to them in just a moment, but we're going to quarter these. We're going to cut these t uh, potatoes in quarters, and we're going to cook those first because they're going to take the longest amount of time, and then we're going to set those aside, but we'll get into that as soon as I finish this list. Um, and then we'll be doing steakhouse green beans, and I've got a couple little secret things I'm going to throw on top of a few of these items that I didn't put in there uh, from things I found in my uh, pantry here in Miami. Uh, but yeah, twin filet mignon, medium rare, red vis, potato salad, and a steakhouse green beans. And for those in the lounge, I want to get started. Uh, they can see us over here. Uh, I have the grill cam uh, on them, uh, but they'll be able to see me from here. What we're going to do first, the first step of this process is going to be the potatoes. We're going to take these potatoes right here, the red blisses. We're going to cut them lengthwise in half, and then we're going to keep cut each of those halves in half, being careful with our fingers, and we're going to make quarters, just about the size of this. We're going to do all of those potatoes. Um, also, if you could put up real quick on there, what do you have for a pan? Can you show me your pan? Danny, are you asking for medium well potatoes? I'm just trying to clarify, you know. Before our chefs so get going. What, what kind of pan you got there? Do you have a saute pan or a cast iron pan? Cast 
iron. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the cast iron pan. Uh, if you're using a grill, we're going to put it on the grill. If you're using a stove top, we're going to put it on the stove top at about medium to medium high heat. We're going to get that heated up, and then we're going to cut these potatoes, and we're going to throw these potatoes when we cut them in quarters straight into the cast iron. We'll add the oil uh, a little bit after. We'll just throw those potatoes in there to go. Uh, so what we're doing here is we're we'll get the uh, take these potatoes and cutting them in quarters. That's the first step, and we're going to cook those. Uh, we're going to start the fillets shortly after that. The green beans are going to take us about five minutes or so at the end. The hardest part of this entire task is going to be these potatoes. Uh, so here we are. We're going to quarter those potatoes for a bit, and we'll worry about cutting the other vegetables and the other items up um, in just a little bit. So we're going to work over here, Fred. I'm going to work with the Zoom yeah. Lounge, and we're going to cut these uh, potatoes up, and you guys do your thing for a bit. So just out of curiosity, what do you cut your, your, your potatoes on? I, right now, I'm cutting it on a plastic cutting board. However, I have a oh. very special wood oh. butcher board that I will be what displaying on today. Yeah, so I got wood butcher board thanks here. Thanks for screwing up. Thanks for screwing up my segue. <laughs> right anyway, our first sponsor, our first sponsor is Wood Butcher Maine. Uh, they've got super durable, attractive wood creations, uh, kitchen, backyard grill, whatever. If you follow Jonathan on Instagram, he without fail one has the best food shots. Uh, Brian is a close second. Uh, in as far as staging and what the food looks like. I am a far away distant third because I eat the stuff and forget to take a picture. So uh, the Wood Butcher's got some great stuff. We're all set up. You can get them too. Uh, they do blocks, cutting boards, coasters. Uh, they have a grill grate that surprised the heck out of me that works great. Uh, and then also a red oak cedar ashtray and cocktail coaster. Uh, it's supposed to be an ashtray. Um, I, I use it for snacks, eat. throw M&Ms in there or something, whatever you want. But uh, you and can get a, that also. Small, another small piece of the bowl in there. You know, food team, food, you know, um, craftsmanship. You can go to woodbutchermain.com and kind of check out what they've got going on. But uh, super cool stuff. And by the way, we, and I'm not going to give anything it. away here, so don't anybody panic. But you are going to see a lot more of them uh, out in the world here in a real hurry. So, Fred, um, just to give you a heads up, too. You? That was a great segue. Um, just to let the people in the Zoom lounge know, I can hear them. Uh, so we can communicate back and forth, Nicole uh, and Matt, so I can hear you guys. So once you get done with those potatoes, let me know. I don't think they can hear you on the show, but I can hear you in my headset so we can communicate. What were you going to say, Fred? Well, I was going to say, according to the show notes, because this is a professionally run show, uh, according to your show notes, this is the part where you talk about what it is to hack it with the hackers. You review the shopping list ingredients and welcome the participants. Uh, I believe you've already done all that. Yeah, I did that. Uh, this is I said, this is a test, and it's actually going surprisingly smooth. Um, so this is something we'd like to do. <laughs> this is something we'd like to continue doing, where we invite guests on to cook with us. We actually, the smoothest part of this show so far is actually the Zoom Lounge that's going on on my cell phone. Um, it's going really well. We're cooking. We're actually on the same same pace here, which is great. Uh, but what we'd like to do going forward, as I said, have people join us, cook with us, uh, enjoy the items. Each week that we do this, it won't be all the time. Sometimes there'll be specials from different locations. Uh, we'd like to invite guests on to cook with us and hack board may with us. Um, so this is our test. So for those participating, it's awesome. We'll work out the kinks. Uh, but it seems like, as usual, the only issue is the actual show itself. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know how this has not been picked up by a network yet. I really don't. I just, it just amazes me. Uh, Jonathan, so our... Am I seeing you smoke? In the, can you smoke in your apartment down in Miami or what? I, I, am, I am not allowed to smoke in my apartment in Miami, but I am doing it because this is America. And if they're going to have my gym clothes, my pool clothes, I'm going to get it done. So what are you smoking? Today I'm smoking the LFD Petite La Volcada. This is a new cigar that we came out with last year. Um, real dark, rich wrapper. Uh, and this is the Petite version. It's like a little tiny Petite Cigarello. Uh, delicious. It's just a nice one. And the reason I'm smoking it is because if I pick the big cigar up, if someone comes to my door, I can say, hey, I'm not smoking and just throw it away. It's not a big deal. Works for me. I've got a – I actually started pulling stuff out of the humidor that, that uh, I didn't – you know, for the road, for the trip. So I basically just raided three different of my humidors. Yeah. Uh, the fourth one I definitely wasn't going to touch. So actually, right. I'm smoking. This is kind of a throwback for me. This is the Ezra Zion uh, – Tantrum, it's the Passive Aggressive Edition, uh, which was one of my favorite cigars they made. And, and uh, if you can find them, uh, you're looking for the PA, the Passive Aggressive is what it stands for, of that series is really, really good. Uh, one, of, one, of my, one of my favorites by them, uh, by far. 
Uh, I shouldn't say by far that diminishes the rest of the portfolio, but this has always been one that I, you know, there's certain cigars you always keep in your humidor. This is definitely one that is always in my humidor. And I was glad I brought some on the trip. Brian, what, what about you? What are you going to be smoking? Uh, Fred, just, well done? I know just before we get to Brian, just before we get to Brian, I want to touch base with the Zoom room here. Uh, Zoom, and, where and, are and you? I wonder at? why this does not run smoothly. Yeah, where are you at, uh, Zoom room? Where are you at in regards to potatoes? Because we're going to uh, be adding those here to the cast iron pan shortly. Smoking tobacco crew. I can hear you, Nicole. So where are we at in terms of your potatoes? You ready to add those to the uh, cast iron? So I'm actually, I doubled the recipe. I'm cooking for four people. Nice. <laughs> so I found the potatoes. I am there. I'm almost done cutting them. But we we started cooking All right, the awesome. cast iron. So the can, next thing, everybody so hear, can, I can everybody can hear. I think everybody can hear. Them? Yes, they can. All right. If you, if you, if you can hear them in the Nicole, comments, exactly. let me know because I can't actually hear them. Uh, let me know if you can. So they've added the uh, potatoes way, uh, to the cast iron. On top of the potatoes, we're going to add some olive oil. We're just going to drizzle it on, a bunch of it. And get a good sear going. Uh, not a good sear, get a good sizzle going. We're also going to be adding salt into that. Uh, today I'm using Urbani white truffle salt. We're going to be putting that on top. All we're doing at this time is salt. Salt and the potatoes. And we're going to let those cook for about 10, 15 minutes or so until they soften up. And this is going to be a more rustic potato salad, so we do want a little bit of char on each side of it. Uh, so we are going to cook these up quite well. Uh, but we got the potatoes going now. That's what's going on in the Zoom room. When we're done with the potatoes, we're going to set those aside and start working on the steaks. Okay, and before I check in with uh, Brian, I do want to mention that in the chat box, Jonathan, did you know that your building manager is actually the watches the show? <laughs> I'm just just uh, saying, uh, uh, Brian. Tell me what you're. All right, so I'm getting the cream spinach uh, simmering. I'm just going to simmer for a little bit, and I just finished the Bernay sauce, and I will be smoking the new Crown Heads Mel Diaz here in a minute, and uh, enjoying that one. Is it out? It will be shipping next month, but I do have samples. Oh, wow. So, so, so if you see Brian out on the road, suck up to Brian. Uh, hey, real quick, uh, what are our Zoom guys smoking? I'm mixing them around. There you go. I'll ask them in just a second. Here we are, so why don't we might as well go back and ask them. There, 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 there are women in the, in, the, in the Zoom room, correct? Yes, yes, there, Nicole's head chef. Um, so she's okay. here. So yeah, uh, Nicole, right. another thing in the Zoom room that we want to add right now, I added some salt, and I want to add some minced garlic to the potatoes as well. So let's add a little bit of minced garlic. The way we're cooking, just go for it. Throw as much in as you want for taste. Um, I, throw in, I threw in about uh, a tablespoon and a half. Um, another thing you're going to see me doing over here in the Zoom room is I, I actually uh, couldn't get balsamic glaze pre-made, so I'm going to be making a balsamic glaze. Uh, but this isn't a step that you ought to take. Balsamic glaze is just balsamic vinegar and uh, sugar. All right. Uh, Scott's in the chat room. He's backing me up on this tantrum full-bodied. Yeah, I'm really liking it. Coop brings up William Cooper's with us. Thanks, William. Uh, he, Cooper probably just, you know, William, uh, Coop jumps onto the show basically to just watch the train wreck and know how far he's come on his show. But he did say that he misses the Ezra Zion fried chicken. Uh, I agree. That was that was actually a really good one, too. That was really tasty. There's so many good cigars out there, though. Um, there really are. There's so many good cigars. So, avoid mistakes to make on this show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I well, Coop runs a solid show. I mean, I've said that all along. I mean, he, re he really does. He's really dialed in. Um, pretty impressed. Uh, someone asked where I am. I'm in Montana right now. So I left Florida, let's see, a week ago. It'll be two weeks as of Thursday. I went up to Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, South Dakota. We did about 3,200 miles. I'm, on the, I'm right on the edge of Glacier Park right now in Columbia Falls. So we've been spending some time going up. We'll go up to Glacier Park. Uh, I, I'm, in a, I'm on a golf course here, so really enjoying that. This has been this has been pretty cool. Um, let's see, guys. Uh, have you ever weighed, guys? Have I weighed, weighed, weighed? I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring the Zoom lounge out. I just figured out I can bring the Zoom lounge in, so we're gonna bring them in. You'll get oh, to see wow. what they're doing. We'll get to say hi to the smoking tobacco crew here. Uh, so we're about to bring you on. We're gonna bring you on live on the show here. So we're gonna go four up. Okay, here before, they are. Before you do that, before you do that, and crap. Entire show. I want to say our second sponsor, at least get them in, McGee's Smoked Meats, which is really Crown Heads. Crown Heads 
awesome cigars along the line. Crown Heads, McGee Smoke Beats. I don't know how he got equal billing out of this, by the way. But uh, they have the finest premium cigars, smoke experiences across southwestern USA. And by the way, I do credit Brian for being one of the first people to really bring, you know, the, the steak experience to the shop. People have done dinners. People have done, you know, lots of different things like that. But Brian is out there, and I remember making fun of him on a sous vide and making fun of him cooking steaks at these events. And then I remember doing the math thinking, I think he's losing about $20 per box he sells at an event. Right. But uh, I had I had the steaks on the road, and they are amazing. They are absolutely amazing. And guess what? The Zoom Lounge is in. So all we, we can do, see all we're doing on the Zoom, Zoom Lounge right now, they can see us, they can maybe hear you, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, the Zoom Lounge right now, we're just working on potatoes. The only thing we're doing is potatoes. They're cooking for four. They, they took, see, our viewers are already raising the bar to such an amazing level. They're doubling the recipe. Yeah. Coop says our production is much more complex oh, because it's more online. dependent on the video. Oh, no. uh, thanks, Coop. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. Um, I, I don't know that that's What's entirely up, true. Um, I think here. it's the personalities it that I'm dealing with that make this show pretty difficult. But um, let's just go with <laughs> Hey, so one thing, thing we found out, guys, one thing the Zoom Lounge we found out is, is nobody can hear the Zoom Lounge except me. <laughs> so that's, a, that's something we're going to work on. The Zoom yeah. Lounge is only here. Uh, I can only hear the Zoom Lounge. Uh, Do you have a picture, Jonathan, of what I'm traveling across country with? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Let's go over to... Um, we're doing your Jeep, right? Yeah. yeah, well, so I've got the Jeep Gladiator, and then I have... Um, a what was it's called a Moby One, which they don't make anymore, but it is an off-road trailer um, that is decked out to go basically any place the Jeep goes. Uh, um, so it's completely kind of air suspension. Uh, it's got a guide in there, Andy. So it, it does have um, it's got air conditioning and a heater, and it's got some hot, hot water and things like that. So I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily roughing it. Uh, although I will say the stretch from Minnesota through South Dakota, going into Montana, it's just windy all the time there. Like you know, we get done at about an eight-hour day, and then we would, uh, you know, it would just be it just be hot and windy. So uh, I don't I don't know that I could live in like South Dakota, uh, North Dakota area. Well, it is a good-looking setup, and you said that, so what you're pulling behind your Jeep has a bed in it, so you're not technically sleeping yeah, so, so, in a tent. No, no, so there's a tent on top that I can open up. It's a huge uh, tent that, um, from uh, Tempui, which makes these cool tents, um, and I've never set it up because there's a queen bed inside, and so I, you just pull over and sleep inside. I mean, at some point, I'm going to have to be uh, doing that, but we'll be on the road probably for another... Uh, I'm thinking of coming back mid September, uh, somewhere in there, kind of see see how it goes. We're gonna we're gonna head down towards I'm Vegas, Reno, Texas at some point. But I'm actually no, gonna like, camp no, no, out. No, no, no. camp out. I rented a lake house in Coeur d'Alene for a month. Uh, I think it is or three weeks, then another week someplace else. So uh, we're gonna be doing that. So we're looking forward to that. So right, enough guys. of me. Enough about. Me. Let's check back in with Jonathan. See where he is on his uh, Zoom piece. So in the Zoom lounge, we're gonna do a little setup and a little prep now. While our potatoes are cooking. We're gonna dice up uh, these shallots. We're gonna be using shallots in two of the dishes. We're gonna use it in the uh, potato salad, and we're gonna be using it in the uh, green beans. So we're gonna take the shallot and we're just gonna stand it up. We're gonna cut the two ends off slightly and then peel it, and then we're gonna cut it straight down the middle. Now, since we probably all don't have a, the sharpest chef's knife in the planet, uh, we're going to be cutting these a little bit perfect. Yeah, so cut it straight down the center, and then you're going to place it down on the, you can see here, we're just going to place the flat ends that we cut straight down. And we're going to cut these a little different. We're going to do a basic dice. Um, it's not going to be the most perfect. Uh, but we're going to take it lengthwise, each half, and cut it as thin as we can, each half. And then we're going to spin those sides around here, as you can see. And we're just going to chop it in the opposite direction. So it's really not a true dice. It's more like a chop, um, which is fine. We're hacking it, and we don't need to be doing all sorts of dicing and have any injuries. Uh, let's say we're doing the best we can just to get the show going live here. Now, another thing I've got going on here, if anybody's watching, I've reduced the balsamic glaze, but my balsamic glaze is done. I'm going to set that off to the side. And our potatoes are about probably halfway done. Uh, so we're going to keep an eye on the potatoes. So we got those shallots set up. Once those are chopped, just set them aside. 
my little Roomba Gerald's going to be busy today. I'm making messes like it's going out of style over here. So we're going to set that aside, and then the next thing we're going to chop up is our celery. We're going to grab the celery. The green beans, we're just going to leave them as is and cook them as is. Keep an eye on your potatoes. As I said, we uh, want to flip those. Probably in an hour, we can probably flip those around a little bit. I know we've been working together on this. And this time you're probably seeing, you're getting a little bit of a char on each side with the cast iron and the potatoes are coming along pretty nice. So this is going to be somewhat of a warm potato salad. We're not going to refrigerate it at all. Uh, but just toss those potatoes around. You really can't overcook these things. Worst case scenario, they turn into french fries. Uh, but now we're going to take the celery, and we already communicated beforehand, so I've already talked to everybody. All the vegetables and stuff have been uh, pretty washed uh, before the show. And what we're going to do is take these celery stalks and cut them straight down the middle carefully. So you get two long pieces out of each. And you're going to cut that little white end off at the bottom. And then cut them straight down the middle. The one right here. And we're going to kind of chop them the same way we did with the shallots, about a tenth of an inch thick, relatively thin. And then we're going to set those aside. And we're going to take those for the potato salad. So, Fred, we're just looking at the potatoes now. Uh, after these things are chopped here, we've got this all chopped up. Um, the next thing we're going to chop on the Zoom call is the prosciutto. So, they got them working with me on that. And then we're going to start putting together, uh, we're going to start our first cooking on the steaks here. Nice. Someone in the comments said that I have to make sure I do a show on location with Brian. Yeah, I'm absolutely going to do that because I'll be through Dallas. So we'll have to time that. Uh, and, and I'll actually not, you know, I'll, we'll do it from Brian's locale. And then I'll actually get to eat some of it, which would be really good. Uh, right. Someone asked if that's the same towel you used on the ribs earlier this weekend. Uh, no. Oh, okay. I have like We're seven. Just gonna take your word for it. Yeah, right. <laughs> as far as you know. As far as you know. All right, is this a good – Jonathan, you got time to do the top five? Let's do it. All right, we're going to do the top five, but you're going to have to read it because I can't I can't see it as you put it up. But so the idea this week was to pick our top five coaches. We kind of went along the theme as far as, you know, uh, Jonathan's kind of coaching the Zoom people a little bit while talking them through it. So we picked our top five coaches. I only know my list. I haven't seen theirs. Uh, I know that I just wanted to put Vince Lombardi five times, but I thought, well, that probably wouldn't be fair. Uh, but I'm guessing everybody picked their home um, coach. So who do we got for the top five? So I'm going to read through them real quick. The Zoom Lounge, we're doing the prosciutto right now. We're just going to take the prosciutto out of the packet. It's probably you're looking about, to do about two ounces. Uh, with yours, since you're doubling it up, you're going to want to do four ounces. So I'll keep an eye. Once you got that open, we can take a look down here, and I'll chop my prosciutto up with you. What I do is I just take it in a bunch. So when you pull it out, we'll bunch it up, and then we'll chop it up. Uh, so top five coaches. I picked uh, Bill Belichick, Nick Saban, Red Auerbach, Mike Ditka, and Phil Jackson. Brian, Brian did. Bill Belichick showed up on all three lists, so that's a huge level of respect. Uh, McGee did uh, Bill Belichick, check uh, Bear Bryant, uh, Roll Tide, Scotty Bowman, Phil Jackson, and Tom Landry. So Phil Jackson making a, a double up on here. And Fred, uh, the, the homer here, Vince Lombardi, very good choice. Bill Walsh, uh, Bill Belichick, much respect there. Bear Bryant, Roll Tide, and then Eddie Robinson. So those are our top coaches. Um, there's so many great coaches out there, right? Wait, wait, wait. Did you not put my asterisk on Bill Belichick? I don't know what you're talking about, Fred. Yeah, I did the oh, same yeah. thing. So, See, he just conveniently yeah, mine was re 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 Yeah, he left it out. Mine said asterisk on Bill Belichick, regrettably. Right. Um, but you got you got to give you got to give him credit where it's due. Um, I, I I wouldn't have uh, I, I don't know. You you have to give him credit. Well, Coop says uh, Tom Coughlin, Charlie Manuel, Pat Riley, Bill Parcell, Scotty Bowman. Okay, another one from Scotty Bowman. Nice. Right. I like you know what Pat Charlie, Riley's Charlie. a really good choice too. We could call him Pat Riley. Yeah, Pat Riley could be a normal. I was really surprised. I was really surprised none of y'all took Bill Walsh also. Yeah, I'm just – I hate the 49ers that much, so. Well, I hate Belichick, but I'd still put him on the list. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> well, the potatoes are coming along pretty nice over here. We're going to be done with those in probably about five minutes. In the meantime, as I said, uh, they're working on – you can see they're, they they got tag team over there, which is great. Uh, they're working on their prosciutto right now. Uh, I'd like to get a check on their potatoes to see where they're at on that. 
they, they, one thing they've done that's interesting, which is it's something that drives me nuts, is I've switched out prosciutto sometimes to pancetta on some of my dishes. And the reason I've done yep. that is because the stupid packaging that prosciutto comes in is so irritating. They have those little things in between. Yeah, Nicole's showing right now. It's so irritating. So I, sometimes I use pancetta I get, for that. I get irritated when they don't have those pieces of paper. Oh, drive me nuts. Oh, I get I get pissed off when they don't have that. Depending on how you want to present it, I I, I like when I order from the deli, I'm like, make sure you put the paper in between it. Yeah, so there, that's where we're at on that. That's a little irritating. But uh, one thing we're going to do now, as I said, the zoom on, just getting the prosciutto ready. Um, as you can see, that the most labor intensive part is really the potatoes um, on this dish. Uh, those are coming to a close. Once I get a check on their potatoes, we're going to add that to a pan. Uh, I'm going to be putting it in a, a, big, uh, a big pasta pan, and then we're going to set those aside to cool. And then uh, the next step we're going to do is we're going to salt our steaks. So the steaks are going to get salted with the Urbani, uh, the Urbani white truffle salt. White truffle salt, absolutely killer. Um, so we're going to uh, liberally uh, salt those. We're going to put, uh, since my mother's watching, we're going to put considerable, it's an inside joke, considerable amounts of salt uh, on this. So... Grab the steaks in the Zoom room, bring them off to the side, and let's uh, salt both sides of these steaks here to get them ready uh, to go in this pan here on the cast iron as soon as we're done with the big, uh, potatoes. So I got to try tempered steak cooking yesterday. So I, I've got this place rented here, this uh, condo, I guess, is rented. And I went to the local grocery store, which is nothing fancy as far as chains are concerned. But being up in Montana, I got Snake River Farms, Wagyu, uh, New York's that were phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I got, um, so all, all in, I had a, a, a Wagyu steak, and I bought two Dungeness crabs that they had just flown in from the West Coast, and a salad, and we did the whole thing for like 55 bucks. And so the grill, though, they did give me a grill here, which is nice, but it's an electric grill, which I'm not a big fan of because they only get so hot. But I did the, I went ahead and did the tempered cooking on that. And I gotta say that worked really, really good to still pull off a really good steak. So I was, I was pretty impressed by that. I don't, I don't usually do that method of cooking, but it did work. Well, how All right. Do you think that grill got for you? Ooh, I don't know. I, if it, if it's if it's three fifty, I'd be surprised. Gotcha. But it, so it got a good sear on it, but I wasn't able to get that real good crust to it. Right. But it did sear. It did have some pretty solid grill marks. Uh, had I not eaten it, I, I could have taken a photo. I did take a before photo of what the steak looked like, which looked phenomenal. Uh, they're pretty proud of it. I would have preferred a little bit thicker steak, but actually, given the electric grill, it was probably better that it wasn't. And it still came out perfectly medium rare. I actually did about half of it. Uh, I pulled it off. I let it sit for about three minutes, and I kind of did the other half, and then I pulled it off again and let it sit a little bit more. So it actually cut all the way through. It was perfect. Um, great steak. They're pretty proud of it, though. Like I said, it wasn't very thick. I want to say it was about nineteen bucks. Right. Um, but uh, but it was good. It was it was actually really tasty. Uh, did you go to a, a Snake River Farm retail? Like it was only Snake River, or just they no. kept in every store there? No, but I'm gonna look for that. So it, I think the grocery store is like a Super Eight. So it's nothing. It's like an Albertsons type thing. Right. It wasn't anything right. incredible. But right. their their butcher department did have some really cool things. All right. So I need to check in on the Zoom room here. Our potatoes should be getting completed. You got the prosciutto done. The prosciutto's chopped up. All right, so the prosciutto's chopped up. We prepped everything essentially for the next dish we're going to do. We're just going to dump this entire pan of potatoes into a separate container we have there, a big serving container. You can actually use what you're serving it in. I put it in this uh, container here. So I got the potatoes in there all roasted up on the cast iron. The cast iron I still kept hot. Um, and I, in the Zoom room, we've got our steaks over here, and we've got those seasoned with salt. Nice. Uh, yeah. Scott asked me a question. If he's, he's in the market for a pellet grill. Uh, any ideas? Um, you know, look, Traeger, Traeger's the 800-pound gorilla in, in the pellet grill market. Um, the one I got, which was for a completely different reason, is that um, – the uh, Pit Boss Austin XL, which actually is only sold by Walmart. What I liked about it was is the diffuser. So you have the grates, and then you have the diffuser underneath it. And what I liked about that is you can open up the diffuser, and there's slats in there where you have about a about a one foot by fourteen inch maybe cooking area uh, of just over the flame. So I kind of like the versatility of that. 
The only downside to that unit that I would say is that um, I can't get much below 200. Door? So there's some times that I've wanted a cold smoke, and I really can't get below 200 on that. But everything else about the girl I love, for the money, it's under 500 bucks. I've been oh, he took your car. Good. So on the Zoom room, Ryan, what are you doing? On the Zoom room, yeah. Zoom room, we need to add, we need or to take that cast iron can that we took the potatoes out of, and we need to re-oil it. A bunch of oil, throw it in there. You should have about a. a, a I'd say about a tenth of an inch of oil at the bottom, and it should start steaming. We're going to get it really hot, and we're going to put those steaks on uh, for about a minute and a half on each side. And we're going to put them on at the exact same time, so we're on the same page here. So we're going to put them on for a minute and a half on one side, flip it a minute and a half. Then we're going to pull the steaks and let them rest for a few moments, about five minutes. We're going to put them on again, let them do that same situation again, let them rest for five minutes, and then we'll do that one more time. Let them rest for five more minutes, so three cycles here. And when that final resting period, we're going to prepare the green beans, and we're going to put together the potato salad really quickly, and then we're going to plate the dish. All right, Jonathan, what oil are you using? I am using, um, geez, I'm using extra virgin olive oil, cold pressed Mediterranean blend. It's the 365 brand uh, from uh, Whole Foods. Okay. It's the one that I had here. Whole Foods. Yeah, so okay. the Whole Foods brand. Uh, Wade, to repeat that, it's the it's the Pit Boss Austin XL is the model that I have that I purchased at Walmart. Uh, Brian, what are you doing? Rectech, uh, uh, Traeger, and the Green Mountain Jim Bowie, probably the best ones, dollar for dollar on the on the market. I am basting my uh, tenderloins and my fillets and butter and garlic, and then they're about to be pulled off and rested. And everything's about to come together about, yeah, right about time for me, about 10 minutes early. Minute <laughs> yep, perfect. So we're just about ready for the steaks in the Zoom room. We've salted those steaks liberally and considerably, correct? Correct. <laughs> All right, perfect. So the next step in the Zoom room is we're going to put those steaks directly on the cast iron when we're ready to roll there. Uh, so we're, we said we've got everything prepped. We've got the shallots. We've got the uh, celery here that we're going to be putting in the potato salad. We've got the green beans ready to go. The chives we have are already diced, which was nice. The garlic we already have was minced, uh, so that took it easy. And then we also have some rosemary and butter that we're going to use at the end to base the steaks with. Uh, but the next thing, we're just on hold right now. I think their potatoes are taking a little bit of time. Uh, which is the challenge. So we're just waiting on the potatoes to wrap up on their end, and then we're going to put these steaks on. So uh, one of our sponsors that I want to bring up and talk about real quick is uh, Red Meat Cover Red Meat Lovers, uh, which we've talked about a lot. They're out of su Southern Florida. Um, they've got these events they put on, and obviously with COVID, they've kind of not been able to do it. But they do have an event coming up on uh, August 29th, and uh, I believe it's in New York, and it's a Steve Saka cigar dinner. So if you have a chance to uh, check them out, let me see if I can see. Um, uh, they're doing four-star food from Saddle River Inn, cigars from Saka. So this is one I think I've seen in a while. This menu is absolutely phenomenal, though. They've got you know local burrata. They've got short ribs. They're doing some gorgonzola cream spinach. Uh, just some amazing things on here along with there. So... Um, uh, you can order the dinner. I'm not, I'm not sure all the details on here. But you can go onto their site. Uh, go to rmlclub.com for more information on what's going on in your area. But it's super cool to start seeing these guys roll out because, I mean, we're all anxious to obviously get out. But uh, this would be a great dinner if you have a chance to see that or look for one in your area. So I just went over to Brian, Fred. He said he's wrapping up there. He's starting to do a plating. I'm still just waiting on the steaks over here in the Zoom lounge. But the Zoom lounge is with us, too. So once we're done, we can ask them what's going on with their cigars. Because they look like they're smoking some cigars, too. Yeah. Wade, what size is that Pit Boss Grill, Fred? Um, I don't know. It's big. It's the biggest one they make. Uh, it's only made for Walmart. It's called the Austin XL. That's, uh, but, I mean, it's, it's, I've never had. I've thrown lots of stuff on there before. It's pretty impressive. I think it's the only uh, pellet grill that does have that feature. You open it up, 
When the flames I think so. The yeah. Well, and I was trying to get away from having a large pellet grill and a large grill. So, and I haven't missed it. You know, you guys know I do a lot of salt blocks. I can do that on there. Uh, Danny, actually, who's on the show, listening right now on the show, he pulled off a salt block. He did a tomahawk mother cup about a week or two ago. Uh, and it looked great. I saw the pictures of that. Danny had his first salt block experience. He can chime in in the chat of how it tasted, but uh, it was it was pretty impressive. So are we ready for the steaks in the Zoom lunch? Yes, we are. I have no idea what. All right, so we're gonna throw these ste we're gonna throw these steaks on. We've got them considerably salted. Uh, we're gonna put them on for about a minute and a half on each side. And one thing you want to do is make sure that you apply the steak away from you so if it splashes up, it doesn't get on you. So when those steaks are on, we got a minute and a half. Potatoes are the key, are the issue here. Potatoes are the problem. How are they the issue? Uh, they just take a while to cook, so when you're cooking for four, uh, there's more potatoes on there. Where I'm cooking a meal essentially for two. So you've got uh, the time that those potatoes are going to take in cast iron. going to be a little bit more extended. So it looks like they're doing well. They got wine over there. I'm going to be dining with them after. I'm going to be staying on a dining. So I'm opening up a nice bottle of wine here that just came in uh, from my favorite vineyard, uh, Faye from Stag's Leap. Uh, it's a 2017. Very really nice wine. I wasn't going to drink tonight, but um, I changed my mind. Well, okay. And, and Jennifer, too. So who's your guest that will be eating with you? Uh, it will probably, uh, the, the, probably be the building manager when they come up to tell me that I'm not smoking. I'll have to smoke. <laughs> That's one way to get out of it. So we're definitely learning some... I think this is actually going smoother than I was anticipating uh, all around. There's definitely some things to learn from this process, but uh, it's not been a total train wreck. So I think that's a really big step in the right direction here. Yeah, I think I, I think that was uh, – I, I agree with you. I think it was a little dangerous to quick call that before the end of the show. But, hey, let's, let's just hope for the best. Right. <laughs> Boy, we started. Hopefully we finished by Brian, are you plating? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to chop up this lobster and then put the Bernays sauce on and show you guys and take a picture before I eat it. I didn't catch how you cooked the lobster. What did you do? I sous vide it as well. Okay. Sous vide lobster, I like that. Yeah, sous vide lobster with butter in the bag with it. You know what? If you're not on two team sous vide, I think you're missing out on a lot of really good opportunities there. But also seafood in a sous vide, like if you like fish and stuff like that, you can't overcook it, and you can run it to the rare medium all the way through. A fish is phenomenal out of a sous vide. So I got the steaks over here. I actually did some sous vide out of my bathtub this weekend. If anybody's seen that on social media. Uh, we did a little yeah, sweet awesome. in the bathtub, um, so that was excellent. I also did a tomahawk ribeye over the weekend in my dishwasher. Uh, this was all sorts of exciting cooking techniques. Uh, but yeah, we're in good shape over here. So we got the steaks going. The crew seems to be lined up quite nicely uh, in the Zoom room. I think their potatoes are wrapped up. We've got the steaks on now. We'll have to pull those for the first rest. Um, the key with the, the key with the tempered cooking is you let the you let the heat which is kind of like indirect heat. Once you remove it, it still has heat, and you let that heat evenly absorb throughout the steak um, and throughout the muscle. So one thing you want to do is when you do take the, the steaks off, you want to turn down your cast iron a little bit so the smoking doesn't uh, overcome you um, and it doesn't burn off the oil. So I turn that down to low, and then we'll turn it back up to high here in just a little bit. But now we're in the resting period on the steaks. We've got the salt on it. Uh, by the way, white truffle salt, absolutely phenomenal. One of the best salts I've ever had. I did some A5 Wagyu over the weekend with it. It was, I mean, it was just amazing. You want to explain to people what A5 is? A5 is a Japanese rating of the quality of beef. Uh, it'd be, for example, us here doing choice, uh, choice, select, uh, prime being the high, choice being the second. Uh, Wagyu was essentially the rating. Uh, and that, that's a rating of Japanese beef, and A5 being the highest rating you can get, and then BMI, uh, BM, uh, what's, I can't remember the last number, letter on it, but uh, then you have the BM, which is like the beef marbling index. Um, essentially, uh, 12 would be the highest rating in that. So A5, BMI 12 would be the highest rating that you can get, um, and it's the fat marbling of it, and it's absolutely incredible. Uh, so if you ever had the chance, it's very pricey by the ounce. Traditionally, is how they sell it, uh, but it truly is a delicacy, and it's prepared very basic. Um, 
just with high heat, high sear, very short time, and a great salt. It's just uh, phenomenal. It melts in your mouth. All right, guys. We're going for the money shot here. Oh, look at that. Uh, perfect. Right there. Look at that. That's a lot. That's a lot of lobster. That is a lot of lobster. Brian, let me uh, hold it right there so I can jump over your screen. Beautiful. Yeah, right. All right, let me take a picture of it before I forget. Yeah, then you'd be like me. See, that's why Carney takes the best pictures because he actually takes them before he eats. And then I take them about halfway through because I forget. But you totally forget and take a picture of it. Yeah. Yeah. Late. That's why yours are the worst. <laughs> well, that's why I created. That's why I created the uh, hashtag. Why I suck at Instagram. John, right. I would take pictures, uh, pictures yeah. of a plate after. Just so you know, we're doing scallops on top of ours too. We have someone in the house cooking them. Ooh, nice. So our our guests are actually raising the bar as well. They're doing uh, surf and turf tonight. Uh, they're doing scallops on top. So they have somebody inside doing scallops. Uh, the steaks have been on. Oh, nice. Have you got the steaks yeah, on the first time? Yeah, we are. We did it a little bit earlier, so ours are resting and we're ready to go. Okay, rest. perfect. All right, perfect. So we'll jump on in round two. That's really good. So we're we're at round two, and then we're gonna at, at the end of round two, we're gonna put together the potato salad, um, and then we're going to start round three. And at the end of round three, they'll rest, and we'll do the green beans, and then we'll play. All right. But cheers to the uh, cheers to the lounge. Uh, I did open my wine, so cheers to the Zoom lounge. Thank you for coming in, in here with us tonight. Uh, one thing that you want to be careful of, uh, as I said, I did make my own uh, balsamic glaze. The one thing you want to be careful of balsamic glaze is to not get it cooking too much because it's going to turn into a caramel. Uh, so I've got a little bit of a caramely uh, balsamic glaze here. Uh, which will work out fine. I'm just going to drizzle it over the top, so it won't be an issue. Uh, but you don't want to cook it too much. Uh, so that's one thing. And the big thing with a glaze is when you think you've cooked it enough, it's overcooked. Uh, so I've got a little bit of a So since Jonathan was in charge of the show running graphically and stuff, we don't have a Would You Rather today, do we? Yes, we do. Not only we do. do we have it, I oh, have a no, streaming. I don't even know what it is. I have a streaming graphic that's oh, now about to run on the top of the screen that says, "Would you rather?" And it might, it might end the show. It might break us down <laughs> because the the circle of death is is hey, rolling. It's it's been a good run. It's been a good run. <laughs> and here it here it is. Would you rather is now up on the screen. I am super impressed that you actually had a would you rather. I'm I'm super impressed. My God. So do you have any would you rathers off the top of your head, Fred? I, I don't physically. I have the graphics. I don't actually have a would you rather. Oh, you didn't actually. No, you didn't actually no. do it. No, absolutely not. Oh. No. <laughs> absolutely. Not. We could have just skipped. All right, I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw it out to the chat room and say, all right, you guys can throw out a would you rather. In the chat room, I actually have a separate little monitor here, phone working that can, I can read there. So you do a would you rather. Basically, the rules are you have to give us two things to choose between. They can be movies. They can be foods. They can be anything you want. If, if you've been watching the show, you know that we're all across the board on these. Um, and anyway, so uh, definitely, if you've got one, throw it in the chat room. I'm, I'm watching. Oh, that's a nice little banner. That is, that is pretty. Uh, it'd be cool if we had questions to go with it. But hey, I'll give you. I'll, you get you get half credit. Yeah, you, you get half credit because I actually really like the banner. That's cool. All right, so I'm gonna let the the the, uh, the chat room throw out any right. would you rather's. So while you're I'm there, those, Jonathan. Yeah, we're gonna uh, we're gonna put together since I see us looking here. We're gonna put together this potato salad. Um, we're going to be putting in half of the shallots that we cut up. So half of those will go in. We're going to do those raw. I like them raw. They taste great. Um, and we're going to do about two-thirds of the celery. You can throw all of it in if you want. I like personally like the taste of celery. Uh, so we throw that in there as well. And then one thing I'm also throwing in there is uh, sun-dried tomatoes. I didn't put that on the list, but I'm throwing sun-dried tomatoes in there. And then what we're going to do is take about two, uh, probably about... Two big squirts, this is not scientific, straight out of a mustard bottle. Uh, it would probably be about six to eight tablespoons of mustard. So we've got that in there. 
And then we're going to do just about the same on the white mayonnaise on top of the mustard there. So we've got that together, and we're going to take some fresh ground pepper, add that in. A lot of pepper. And we're going to get a lot of good seasoning from the potatoes too, since we've got some char on there from the cast iron. We already had the cooked garlic in there. I like to add a little bit more salt. And then the last item we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of lemon juice in there. And we're going to add about probably an ounce and a half of lemon juice. And then we're going to add about two to three ounces of olive oil. We're going to make up for the light mayonnaise with extra olive oil. And then we're going to take a fork or spoon and simply mix this sucker up to make a great potato salad. We want to make sure we cover all the potatoes. And really the tip, what you're looking for on the doneness for those watching with us um, is the doneness on the potatoes is your fork should be able to easily go through the whole potato. So that's how you know when the potato is done. So mix that up a few times and we're going to set the potato salad off to the side and we're going to garnish that with chopped chives at the end on our final plating. Uh, the potato salad's done and now we're ready to turn up the heat on our cast iron uh, for our round two on our steak. And we're going to have three total rounds. So after this round, we're going to pull the steaks off and let it rest. For the sake of time, we're going to cook the green beans. And then we'll do round three right at the end with the basting with the butter. One thing we're doing is we're cooking in the same pan. So we're getting a lot of flavors from all these dishes um, combined together. So there's a lot of good flavors and a lot of good seasoning that's going to come from these things. Uh, from the steak, they're going to taste really great with the fat being added. Uh, so that's one of the main reasons why I'm just using olive oil today. And still, except at the end when we use the butter. Uh, but the green beans are going to take some of the fat from the steak, the salt from the steak, some of the starch from the potatoes. Uh, so it'll be uh, a really nice, uh, really nice blend of flavors for everything. All right. We have our first would you rather question. Mike asked, would you rather watch Batman or Superman? I'm going to predict this will be unanimous. Brian, Batman or Superman? Batman. Jonathan? Batman. I'm going Batman. I was correct. It was going to be unanimous. It, if you both would have picked Superman, I would have picked Superman. Then I would have went unanimous either way. But no, I was going Batman no matter what. Uh, Renee, so would you rather... Oh, wow. This is a tough one. Would you rather no more cooking or no more cigars? Jonathan. Oh, wow. I don't know a hell of a hot, whole lot about either of them, so I think I'll go no more cooking. I guess, geez, no more cooking, I guess. Wow, that's a tough one. Is that is that no as in K-N-O-W? Or is it no, like stock no, cooking? No, it's no as in N-O. N-O. Oh. Would you rather go no more cooking or no more cigars? Well, no more cigars. You want to revise your answer? Yeah, no more cigars. Brian, no more cooking? No, yeah, no more cooking because I can always get somebody else to do it. <laughs> oh, look at you at the loophole. Okay, you know what? Brian swayed me because I was actually going to go no more cigars on that, which would have been really tough. But Brian found a loophole, so I'm going with that. I'll have somebody else cook for me. All right, I'm going with that. All right, so Brian, we're getting ready for round three. If, if, I was giving out point, if I was giving out points anymore, Brian would have got all the points on that particular answer. Sorry, we're getting ready for round two over here. I got a little bit of smoke coming on my pan, uh, which is nice. So we're going to go round two on the steaks. So let's fire those babies up. Uh, we should get a nice crust going there, so we'll get those on there uh, for about a minute, minute and a half on each side. We'll pull it off for rest, and we're going to get the green beans ready to go. I'm going to go back to giving points out. So I got the... Uh, I got them live on the screen now, and I've got their sound turned on, uh, so we can hear a little bit of action of what's going on in the Zoom lounge here. They've got a whole team over there. I'm a little bit envious. Yeah, that's okay. Pretty good. Very gentle. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, you know, you're you're in Miami. You don't have your sous chef anymore. No, so I got the smoke, and so we're gonna go for round two on the steaks. 
They're cooking on the grill with the steak, which is nice. You can do the same thing on the grill as you can uh, with a cast iron. Um, to an extent, cast iron is just super even heat distribution. So that's why when you tend to cook on cast iron with this tempered cooking method, that it tends to come out a little more evenly in the middle, uh, a little bit more evenly cooked. Uh, that's mainly because it's just a real even, uh, even heat distribution. I like Renee's comment. She says, you can get someone else to cook you some yummy food. Can't find someone else to smoke a cigar for you. That's right. <laughs> John, what's the prosciutto for again? The prosciutto is going to be going on the green beans. Okay. So we're going to be throwing that in the green beans here coming up shortly. Okay. So that'll be, that'll be coming into play here just a bit after... I think you guys in the room and there in the Zoom lounge, you're on your your second resting period, right? Yeah. Do you have a, do you have a, do you guys have a free pan available to uh, to do the green beans in? We do not right now. Right. So we can save the green beans till the end. How's your potatoes come along? Done. Potatoes have to put together. Perfect. Beautiful. Um, yep. So let me know when you're let me know when you have a friend a, a friend. Let me know when you have a pan free uh, for the green beans, and we'll get going on the green beans here in a bit because uh, my steaks are on uh, on a rest right now. Okay. Yeah, we have forty five seconds till the second round of steaks are done. All right, cool. Thank you. And then, so once that's done, we can uh, well, we can get to the green beans. So, can you see the Zoom room? I cannot. Well, no, actually, that's not true. In the feed, I can see um, it's super small, though, because it's split up. So, But I can see a little bit of it. Okay. So, Brian, do you know what you're going to cook when you hack a gourmet with uh, everybody cook with you? Do you know what you're going to cook? Man, I haven't even thought that far ahead. <laughs> I will probably do something with Brussels sprouts just to represent because we're missing it this time. Yeah, that's right. We've, we've been on a run without Brussels sprouts a little bit here. Yeah. Well, oh, no, we, we, have, last week. we haven't been on a run without them. And by the way, they're right here just in case we need them. Good, good. Do you have, do you have fiddleheads with you too? No, I told you. They're not in season anymore. But that was a great picture that you did send on your journey oh, there. Yes. That was in Wisconsin? Yeah, Wisconsin Fiddleheads Cafe. Wow. Now, was it named because of the fiddlehead, or was yeah, it yeah, and they're and and they're not afraid to eat them past the point that the main people are. You know, where they think they're poisonous, they'll just keep eating them because Wisconsin people are tough. But hey, right, you know, right. whatever, whatever. <laughs> One thing the Zoom room and I are doing really good at together here is we are doing a great job at, at drinking wine together. We we've, we've actually drank wine consistently has been the one step that we've done exactly at the same time uh, pretty much throughout the entire episode. So we're on, a, we're, on a good, we're on the same page here, at least in one way. I think they're getting ready for green beans here in a bit. That's good because the show's over now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've already Brian been eating. Brian got, yeah, yeah, Brian got done eating. He's on cleanup, you know. He's been done for 30 minutes. Yeah, you know, looking at the Google Analytics, looking at the Google Analytics and Facebook Analytics, our average viewer watches for 25 minutes. Uh, so for us in regards, we need to get the show down in about 20 minutes. So maybe the making fun of Brian and finishing dishes in 15 minutes is either the, when he's done cooking, people just leave, um, or maybe the show needs to be 15 minutes long. Ooh, cooking in 15 minutes. I think we could maybe do 30. I don't know about 15 minutes. Yeah, there'd be a lot of show prep beforehand. So I'm going to start the green beans because I know when the show's over, I'm still going to be cooking with the uh, Zoom, Zoom lounge here. So what I'm going to be doing with the green beans is I'm throwing in a whole bunch. It's about six ounces. I'm just throwing it straight into the oil. This is going to go very quick. Green beans cook fast. So we got that. I'm throwing in about two and a half, three ounces of prosciutto right on top. Got that going. I'm throwing a little bit more of the white truffle salt directly on top. 
Okay. I'm going to throw in a little bit of garlic in there, right on top of the green beans. It's going to kind of just get a little sweat going. I'm going to put the rest of the shallots on the top there. So that's good to go. Let them sit for a moment. Make sure I'm not missing any ingredients. A little bit of lemon juice. Lemon juice will steam a little bit. It's nice. We're just going to toss them on top of each other a little bit here. Those are going to sit for about a minute, two minutes at the most. I like my vegetables like this a little more al dente, uh, so I don't like them all soggy. Uh, so I cook, when I cook these types of vegetables, I cook them quick. So I have a little can off the side here. <laughs> I'm going to put these in when they're done. And then the steak's going to go on next for its final period. We're going to throw the butter in there. And I'm going to keep everything in here. So essentially I'm going to be basting with pan sauce. Uh, so I've got prosciutto, shallots, the flavors from all that, the balsamic vinegar, some citrus from the uh, lemon juice uh, on that. So I'm going to be cooking these steaks with a lot of flavors. So that pan sauce and that butter is going to be real nice on top of it. And I'll be honest, I'm going to get a little wild. I think I'm going to throw a little bit of, a tiny little bit of red wine in the butter. Oh, Why not? Oh, uh, uh, crazy, crazy talk. I'm surprised you have any wine left over. <laughs> well, you know he bought a six pack of it. <laughs> yeah. He's got a he's got a whole box. Yeah, you know, all the all the different kinds of wine I drank during the uh, during the quarantine. There, the box wine was definitely a dark, dark stage of my life. <laughs> Our scallops are ready. Scallops are ready in the Zoom lounge. The green beans are ready on my end. <clears throat> We've got the grill turned up to medium medium high heat. I'm throwing in a whole stick of freaking butter. Why not? I'm going to take three sprigs of rosemary. I'm going to leave two on the side for garnish on top. So I got the rosemary in there with the butter. <coughs> Once that melts down just a little bit, we're going to throw the steaks in there and we're going to start basting. And basting is essentially, uh, we're just going to, as you can see here, we're just going to have the butter melting. And we're going to have the steaks on one side, and we're going to, for about a minute, on each side, 30 seconds to a minute on each side, we're going to just take and throw, essentially with a spoon, the butter and rosemary blend we got going on here directly on top of those steaks. And let's put a little red wine in there, why not? Yeah, I'm going to bring you up. And then we'll get ready to plate, and we'll get ready to end the show. It does smell awesome in here. One big difference of cooking inside, especially in my little apartment down here, a little studio apartment, is uh, the aromas are amazing. Outside, great, but I mean, my, my whole place smells like steak. Um, my bed is right behind me, actually, uh, so I'm going to sleep in a steak-infused uh, bed tonight, which is going to be amazing. Steak <laughs> is cigar-infused. Yep. Yep. All right, here we go. We've got this heated up. And we're going to throw these steaks in here, right in the butter, right in the rosemary. We're going to arch the pan just a little bit. We're just going to throw the liquid right on top here with the spoon. Beautiful. This is kind of a method of indirect heat that you're applying as well. The point of the basting is it's going to, really what you're waiting for is when the butter starts to froth a little bit, starts to get some foam, that's when you know it's in good shape. And the basting is going to break through that top layer of char we have, and that butter is going to coat the top of the steak. So now we're going to flip it over, same on the other side. <clears throat> and let's get ready to plate it up. Uh, and the final resting period for me is going to be during the plating, so I'm not going to cut into this right off. 
damaged, but I will have a picture posted up online after the show about how good it looks, hopefully. So here's my wood butcher board. I think this has got cherry, birch, mahogany. This is a really nice one that Aaron made for me uh, over, the, over the holidays this past year. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a big heaping serving of the potato salad. We're going to pile this on the right hand side, left hand side, sorry. We're going to top it with a little bit of the sun dried tomatoes for garnish. We're going to hit it with the shallots on top. And the last thing, which I haven't told anybody about, we're going to put a little seasoning on top. We're going to use grains of paradise. This is one of the grains that they use in the Samuel Adams Summer Ale. Um, it's a grain that has somewhat of a peppery taste, but it's a little smoother. Uh, but if you ever drank the Sam Adams Summer Ale, that's kind of a peppery taste you get into it. I have a Grains of Paradise grinder here, so we're grinding Grains of Paradise on the top. And just a slight tad more salt for seasoning. And that's good to go. We're going to put the green beans on the right-hand side, and our fillets are going to rest on top of the green beans. Pull these off here. Last thing we're going to do, let's hit it with a little bit of salt. I've got some shaved Parmesan that we're going to serve on the green beans as well, right around the edges. And the Zoom Lounge, this is the final product. You guys get to see it first. And now we're going to bring it They're to everybody favorites. else. <laughs> Nice. That looks good. That does look very good. nice. See, look at that presentation. So pretty. I just need to get the ingredients off the screen here. There we go. And voila! And as I said, I'll be staying on with the Zoom lounge here. Uh, but that's a uh, filet mignon, <coughs> twin filet mignons with the steakhouse green beans, a homemade potato salad with uh, grains of paradise and sun-dried tomatoes. Uh, I'm going to pair that up with some wine tonight. And uh, like I said, I'm going to be sticking on with the, the crowd in the Zoom lounge. We're going to be eating. They're still finishing up some work there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the first time, I think it went pretty well. And uh, the show was a, the show went good. Nothing went done, nothing went wrong. So the uh, Internet was good. I, I'm happy where we're at right now. When I got in, coming into the show, we got started a little late. Um, I wasn't sure what direction this was going to go. But I think uh, all went well. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it did. Uh, you know, I'll look forward to uh, more of these over the coming weeks and months. We're going to be continuing to add new and kind of innovative ways, you know, to kind of bring the food to you guys, different experiences. Uh, this was the first one that we actually had someone cooking where you have a chance to cook with it. Uh, in this case, it was Carney, obviously. Uh, Brian will be up next, and then I will we'll follow with something different uh, down the line here. Uh, we're also looking at some live virtual steak events featuring Hack and Gourmet, Wood Butcher, Main and LFD and Crown Heads coming to some cigar retailers as we get the retailers kind of opening back up. Uh, our next show is going to be August 10th on Facebook again. It will go back to 5 o'clock. This was just the one, uh, 5 o'clock Eastern. This was just a one-off. We had a bump at an hour. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to catch the pictures or catch past episodes or this episode, uh, you can hit up YouTube, Food Art, and Instagram at Hacking Gourmet. And on the web, we have actually have a website called HackingGourmet.com. Go figure. I don't know how we came up with that name. Uh, where all the episodes, the top list, the ingredients are all featured there. Uh, we have a recipe section we're putting under construction. We're going to start putting the recipes on there as well. Uh, and some mer merchandise. You know, you can sport some, uh, some uh, Hacking Gourmet swag if you want. Uh, and that's it. So I guess we're, we're 14 days out. We'll see everybody again in 14 uh, Brian, will you still be uh, in in Texas? You still be home in fourteen days? I, I should be. We uh, we just did our traveling road show oh, with minute. Rocky, uh, Oliva, and uh, Alec Bradley. So they're going to ask me to stay home for fourteen days. So I'll be here. <coughs> and then, Carney, where are you going to be? You going to be still? Are you staying in Miami for a while? I'm going to be in Miami for the foreseeable future. Here, I I will be making a return back to the Northeast before the end of the summer. 
Uh, but I'll be back in Miami uh, for our next show, and uh, we're excited. We'll probably have a guest on, and uh, I said we'll learn some things from from the Zoom thing. But I, all, all in all, this went well. But thank you for everyone that participated in the Zoom lounge. I'm looking forward to eating this meal. And uh, but yeah, Miami. We'll be we'll be, be in Miami here, and Brian will be quarantined in Texas, and Fred, you'll be gallivanting. Uh, I'll be switching states. So the 14th, I think I will be in Idaho. I think I'll be on the lake in Idaho. So I'm looking forward to that. So again, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, thanks for putting up with all of our shenanigans and trying to figure all of it out. And uh, join the, if you're around, hang out in the Zoom lounge with Carney where they'll be eating and drinking more wine if there's any wine left. And uh, we'll see everybody else in two weeks. Have a great night. Thank you. See ya. All right, guys.